want to apologize first of all for the camera angle and it's just I know it's still a little bit it's gonna be moving a little bit because I'm actually holding up my phone to do this video because I'm recording it from an undisclosed undisclosed location um, I don't have my microphone with me but I do want to talk about the Chelsea match that just finished um, because I want to do a lot more of these where I do post match reactions uh, of, of clubs that aren't just United so I want to do as many of these as I possibly can and you know I watched the Chelsea match so why not talk about that as well um, so first things first Chelsea defeating Newcastle 2-0 realistically it could have been more it could have Newcastle actually could have gotten a goal themselves um, had they played their cards a little bit better but unfortunately for them they weren't able to uh, take advantage of some of the chances that they were given in the second half um, for, okay so let's talk about the first half Chelsea were undeniably the best team in that entire first half. From start to finish, they were extremely dangerous. Newcastle really weren't able to stop them on a consistent basis. Obviously, um, they, Chelsea definitely missed a lot of chances. They could have been up 3-4-0 just in the first half alone. But Newcastle stayed in it. And I think that the biggest thing for Newcastle is that they do, they do have a lot of heart. Um, I think that's probably Steve Bruce. Like I don't think he's necessarily... A great manager. He's definitely tactically not the best. Um, he's been in the Premier League so many times and he's never really done anything with it. But to be fair to him, he's always managed small clubs or teams that have uh, very modest and humble um, goals for a season. But, you know, he's he's very good at keeping his teams in a match and putting them in the situation where if, if they, they can potentially steal a draw or steal a win um, given the right circumstances. And to be fair to them, you know, they survived that entire first half being only one nil down. And they did have one or two chances in that first half, but really it was pretty much Chelsea dominant from start to finish. And the biggest thing is that now Chelsea's offensive players are starting to really gel well together. I mean, Timo Werner, he's been playing extremely well as of late. He started off the season rather poorly, but that was probably down to him having to adapt to a new system. A new manager, a new city, a new country, a new league, a new, brand new team. So there were plenty of factors there that, you know, it, it makes sense for Timo Werner to start off the season a little bit slow and then pick things up as he has been doing um, as the season progresses. And I think he's definitely going to be a massive player for Chelsea uh, in uh, over the next few years. And I think he could potentially be one of the best strikers in the world very, very, uh, very, very shortly because he has the potential. He has the speed. Um, his positioning is great. His runs are very smart. I just think that as of right now, he really does need to uh, work on his finishing because not that his finishing is bad. It's just that there are a lot of times where he misses or he just maybe like makes a split second wrong decision and it leads to him either missing a chance or not quite being in the right position to to uh, have an opportunity. So I think that once he fixes that, which will come with experience, will come with getting used to the Chelsea system, he's going to be very, very dangerous, which he, he already is. But um, I think he'll become even more dangerous as time goes on. Um, the biggest surprise, obviously, considering how bad they were at the start of the season, is just how stable uh, Chelsea's defense is as of right now. They conceded a lot of chances in the second half. But they were, they were able to keep a clean sheet. And at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter how many chances you give away. It's about the quality of the chances. And to be fair, you know, Mendy didn't really have to make too many big saves in the entire match. He really did just, uh, he made a few saves, but most of them were pretty simple. And they were from awkward positions for Newcastle. So he just kind of had to be in the right position and not have to do too much. He didn't really have any miracles, I would say. Um, even though there was one difficult shot that took a deflection, and then I can't remember who deflected it. I think it was maybe Zuma, and then it uh, it went to him. But you know, he did have a, 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 a an opportunity here or there to show off uh, what a good keeper he is. But for the most part, it was all simple stuff. And you know, credit to him, credit to him. He did his job, and he continues to do his job very well. Especially considering, you know, he replaced Kepa, who essentially every shot was a goal. I mean, he had a percentage of of uh, goals per shots, which is just embarrassing and Mendy and you could I would say it's not just Mendy I would say it's the entire defensive system working a lot better obviously now that Thiago Silva has slotted in he didn't play today with Zuma and Rudiger playing today but obviously you know once uh you know now, now that they've all started to gel together they've started to build up um, a nice rapport it's just going to improve for him and undoubtedly if you look at Ch uh, Chelsea's lineup they are one of the best teams in England. I mean, Mendy has shown to be a really good keeper. Chilwell has been for a long time a very, very good left back and one of the best in the league. Um, you know, Zuma, Rudiger, they're not the best, but they are guys who are physically strong. They're quick. 
And uh, with the right system, with the right people around them, they can be very, very good. Reese James has been playing excellently all season long. In midfield, you know, they always have Kante, they have Jorginho, they have Mason Mount, they have Kai Havertz. I mean, we're talking about really good players. Ziyech has been amazing. Now that he's started to play consistently, he's just been phenomenal. Up front, obviously, have Timo Werner. Olivier Giroud, I mean, I don't rate him that highly, but you have to say, like, the guy when he, you know, he does score goals. And he does uh, produce, He does a lot of work for whatever team he plays for, whether it's France, whether it's you know, with Arsenal or Chelsea. He always puts in a shift, and somebody like that has to be respected. And Giroud, he's not the best, but he always does his job, and he works really hard. So, you know, overall, this is a very good Chelsea team. I don't think they're going to win the league. I don't think they're going to win the Champions League. They might win a cup or two. Um, but, you know, this is a this is a very good team with a, a lot of potential and one to look uh, to very to keep a very close eye on over the next few years because they're going to be very, very competitive. They're going to be very, very dangerous uh, once they really start to um, find a lot of chemistry among these players. Like, once they... Once they really gel well together, maybe bring in one or two more players, they're going to be a very, very dangerous team domestically and abroad. So when it comes to Newcastle, just to kind of close out on them real fast, um, I mean, to be fair, like I said, they were able to keep themselves in this match for a very long time. Um, they only lost 2-0, and uh, it could have been closer. They also could have been a lot farther. But, you know, to be fair to them, like I said, they kept themselves in the match, and that's really all you can ask. I mean... I don't think anybody expected Newcastle to beat Chelsea. I don't think anybody in that locker room uh, expected them to beat New, uh, Chelsea. So I don't think they can. I don't think they should lose any confidence from this because, like I said, to be fair, they did a decent job of keeping themselves in the match. But they really do need to start picking up points because uh, they've been they've been pretty bad this season. And I don't think with the players they have, I don't think they're relegation fodder. Um, but if they if they don't pick it up a little bit, then they they are going to be in a relegation battle, which they tend to be, I guess, over the la over over the last however many years. I mean, they've been down before. You know, they've been consistently just fighting to stay up. And I really do feel like you know with Rafa Benitez, because Benitez and I don't really I don't really like the guy, but I have to say he is definitely a higher level manager of what Newcastle deserve. Um, he just on his tactical prowess alone, he was able to save their asses a lot of times. And I don't think Steve Bruce is necessarily the guy that's going to be able to win you matches, um, you know, based on his strategy or based on his tactical intelligence. He can keep you in there, and if the players do a good job, then they can potentially steal one here or there. But he's not a guy that's going to be, you know, leading Newcastle to be beating the top teams uh, on a consistent basis. So I think Newcastle have to be worried, but at the same time. They have had some good performances. They do have some good players in that team, especially, obviously, St. Meximan. Uh, and I do think they will come good, and I think they will stay up. It's just going to be a little bit of a fight for them. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like the button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and let me know in the comment section down below what you think of everything I said. Um, like I said, I'm sorry that the quality isn't great. Uh, it is what it is. I'm trying to bring you guys as much comment, uh, content as I can. And that entails sometimes doing things in uh, conditions that aren't necessarily ideal, but it is what it is. So really, guys, thank you from the bottom of my heart, and I'll see you in the next video, which will probably be a uh, reaction to City Tottenham, which may actually come out after the United versus West Brom match if I'm not able to do it before. Um, but you will be seeing me talk about both of those matches sometimes after, sometime after this one. So, guys, see you then.